I got a um, couple of scholarships, one of which was a Navy scholarship, uh, full, full paying everything. And uh, one was to Harvard and one was to Tufts University. And like an idiot, I picked Tufts because I knew somebody going there who was in a fraternity that sounded like it was fun. So I can't believe it, but I turned down Harvard and went to Tufts for a Navy scholarship. And then by that time, I'd started singing like the Kingston Trio would come out. And I was a folk singer imitating them and taught myself the guitar and so on. And rounded up guys and, you know, got them playing instruments and so on. So my real ambition in college was to start a folk singing group because it was hot then, which I did. A group of water buffaloes called the Nomads Five, which were about average terrible. Um, and that's what I spent most of my time doing. I did not study. I never went to class. Um, I became incredibly good at a game called the hockey game, which is the one where you spin the players and push them back and forth mm -hmm. by virtue of playing the game all night every night in Miller Hall. Uh, and I ran into a guy named Al Dana, who was an amazing singer. He and I dominated the freshman talent show. I did stand up and he did, he sang. And my group of water buffaloes sang and did okay. Uh, and it was clear to me that Al was like the key to really being in folk music because he had an incredible voice. In fact, in, he's still my friend and he became the hottest jingle singer in New York for a million years afterward in the 80s, making you know half a million a year singing jingles. So that's the kind of singer this guy was. So I latched onto him and we concocted a two-man group. Um, However, it was clear that in order to leave the scholarship and go off and be a folk singer, which is what I wanted to do, um, I would, if I simply quit, I would be in the Navy as an enlisted man by the contract. However, if I flunked out, flunked everything, or at least flunked out, then the Navy didn't want me. So I said to my father, you know, this is my plan. I explained my plan to him, and he was silent when he heard this. By, I didn't explain to him that by then it was too late, that I was already comprehensively flunking out with five Fs. And uh, so then we became folk singers for three years. Well, it was actually the most fun you can imagine. Uh, you know, there's just two of us. Again, it was a different era. We didn't have to travel with a, with a tour bus and, you know, a whole truckload of props and lights and, you know, riggers putting up stages and so on. We're just two guys. Uh, two guitars, a banjo, a, you know, some clothes. We had these Brown and Dana, it was the name of the group, Brown and Dana outfits, you know, that were like blazers. <laughs> and uh, a sheet of instructions for the guys running the lights, you know, for this song, give us a red light, for this one, give us a blue light, you know. And uh, that was it. We used the PA system at the school, however it was, good or bad. We asked for two mics, we'd settle for, or four, we'd settle for two. Uh, and we did 300 college concerts. We, wow. you know, we drove 100,000 miles a year in my Pontiac Bonneville convertible. Wow. And we, you know, we, we would do a show and then we weren't well enough known to have them lined up in an orderly way. So we'd do one and drive 1,000 miles and do another one and drive 1,000 miles and do another one and then sack out in a motel for three days, you know. So it was, uh, it was great, phenomenal. 